Today we're going to be talking about input and output machines. So the first way I like to think about input output machines um, doesn't involve really math at all. So this is the machine and basically what happens is I put something into this side, it does some magic in here and it spits something out. Um, so inside here it follows a certain set of rules um, and so for example if I were to add sugar, watermelon flavor, and pink food coloring into my input, and this was a candy machine, it would work its magic, and on the other side, it would spit me out a watermelon candy. So we're gonna use this same idea, except for instead of making candy, what's gonna happen is in here, we're going to do some mathematical operations. So the operations, remember, are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So I'm gonna take away my food, and we are going to look at this in terms of some math. So the first um, machine that we talk about in our notes um, takes whatever you put into it and it adds eight. So when we are dealing with input output machines, we often like to organize in terms of a table. So we will have our input, and our output. So the input is the number that I plug into my machine. So if I put a one into my machine, my machine is going to add eight. So my input is one, I'm gonna add eight, so it's going to output nine. So that means that my output is going to be nine. Now, if I change my input, my output changes as well. So if I input two, my output is going to be 10. Because two plus eight is going to give me 10. I can continue this on and I can put really any number that I would like into here. Oh, I should have left that. So if I put in three and I add eight, I'm going to get to 11. And if I get put in four, plus eight, it's going to output 12. So this table creates a really nice way that we can organize. Now, another term that we should talk about is the pattern rule. So the pattern rule for this input output machine is add eight. So whatever I put in, I'm going to add eight. Now there are lots of different ways that my input output machines can work. So we're going to look at another example of a different type of machine. So I'm gonna leave some of this here as a little bit of a structure. So. The next input output machine that we're gonna talk about, it's pattern rule, is that is going to double. So it's going to double then add six. So I'm going to have a different set of inputs this time. So I'm gonna have two, four, six, and eight. So we're going to times by two and then add eight. That is going to be my new um, pattern rule. So I'm going to start with plugging in that two. So when I plug in the two, I'm gonna multiply by two first. So that'll give me four. And then I'm going to add eight. So four plus eight is 12. Now, sometimes it's helpful um, to actually do the work. So um, if I were to just get rid of this for a moment so we have a nice workspace, I would say two times two equals four, then add, oh, we were only supposed to be adding six. I should keep that all the same. So in that case, this is only gonna be 10, sorry. Then I'm gonna add six to get 10. So when I then plug my four in, 
4 times 2 is equal to 8, plus 6 is equal to 12. I'll plug my 6 in. 6 times 2 is equal to 12, plus 6 equals 18. And the last one I'll plug in is 8 times 2 equals 16, plus 6 is equal to 22. So we can do this for pretty much any pattern um, or any pattern rule that we can come up with. So there are a variety of different um, questions that I would like you to try out. Um, one of them actually asks you to check that the input output table is correct. So you'll have to try and come up with um, a pattern or see if it seems to make sense as to all the different jumps that it does um, and let us and let me know how you do. If you have any issues, please let me know and we can have a little chat about them.